This is PBS. Pre-teens and in-betweens. The time is now. The place is 13. Every Sunday from 5.30 to 8. Where in the world is... Carmen San Diego. Oh, it's in the mix. It's in the mix. Awesome. 13's hidden treasure sweepstakes could mean this luxurious Lincoln Mark 8, a grand prize treasure valued at over $37,000, or one of the other fabulous prizes all donated to benefit 13 and you. When you enter, please include a check because you treasure 13. Need an official entry form and rules? Call or write. Enter before May 26th, and you could also win a wondrous trip to London. For 13, for the fun, for you, for the treasures, enter our hidden treasure sweepstakes now. I'm Raul Trujillo, and we'll explore the power of dance when we begin dancing in May. Major funding for this afternoon's programming is provided by the Helena Rubinstein Foundation, a longtime supporter of outstanding children's television. Pauline, you have two chances to jump to the top of the pyramid. Each number you land on will be added to your score. You will be safe if your total stays between positive 25 and negative 25. If it goes outside this range, you'll be thrown from the pyramid. And remember, you have one zapper. It changes negative to positive or positive to negative. And time is of the essence. Begin. Ruby. Total, negative four. Fourteen! Total, ten. Hmm, now what? If I were you, and I am, what would you do? I'd jump on the... Wait! I've got it! And just in time! Time flies over us, but leaves its shadow behind. Zap it! Okay, your decision. Total negative eight. Just as planned. Now I'll yeah. I'll just close my eyes and go for it. We haven't the time to take our time. Negative nineteen. Total negative twenty-seven. You are out of range. Goodbye. Oh no. Yeah! <clears throat> you have one more try and no more zappers. Begin. Who needs them? Total negative four. Fourteen! Total ten. I know how to sing that song. Negative one! Total nine. Mm, negative nineteen! Total negative ten. Time to think. All that's left is that huge thirty-two. That monstrous thirty-two. And I have no zapper. I don't know how to sing that song, and I probably have precious little time. What's not destroyed by time's devouring hand? See? Hey, just use your head. 32 is big, but... But I've got negative 10, so I can make it! That's right. That's right. 32! Total 22. We did it! We did it! Yahoo! You have stayed within the range of 25 and negative 25. But I'll get you next time. Join the Navy to see the world. And what did I see? 
I saw the sea. Welcome aboard. Nobody's in. Yes, yes, yes. I can take a message. No, 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 you misunderstood me. When I said nobody's in, I don't mean literally nobody's in. My name is nobody, and this is my inn. Inn. Hotel, lodging, guest quarters. Yes, well, I'm sorry if you're confused, but that's not my fault, is it? Shove off, then, matey! Give me the better class of clientele. Oh, well, this new promotional campaign should help. Zero! Ah, oh, well, if it isn't the captain's wife, let me pipe you aboard. Don't you think you're carrying things a bit far, nobody? No, not a bit of it. Anchors away, weekends away. My new advertising campaign during the yacht regatta, it is working like a charm. 20% discount for sailors. Such a nice class of people, too. If you think so, dear. Oh, bullseye. Ahoy there. Ahoy there. Yes, yes, I'm right here, not invisible, you know. I'd like a cabin, please, on the poop deck. Mm. A little nautical humor there. Ha! Right. Are you here for the night? Actually, I'd like to stay a week. Glutton for punishment. I'm Titus Tafriel. I saw your ad in the huge power boats no one can afford journal. 20% discount for sailors. Did you now? Oh, very good. Yes, I wrote that myself. Mm -hmm. Did you like the part about the special price if you bring your own sheets and towels? Actually, I was attracted to the complimentary shrimp left on your pillow each night. Oh, yes, yes. That's done very well for us. Well, here's your key. Room 9, top of the stairs, take a left. Is it chip shape, you know, clean? What? Room 9, is it clean? Oh, yes, of course it's clean. Ah. Hasn't been a soul up there in years. Send back the sailor, sailing the bounty main. Bill, please. The name's Cyril, not Bill. Cyril, nobody. And that's Commodore to you. No, no, the Bill. How much do we owe you? We're going to be late for the yacht race. Yeah, we didn't get our wake-up call. And then I couldn't get the smell of shrimp out of my hair. What was it doing on my pillow? Oh, yes. You're the couple that asked for seven bells. Right, Davy and Dana Jones. Yes, yes. Well, I'm sorry, but I couldn't get you that many bells on such short notice. Hey, it's just nautical talk. Seven bells means 7.30. Oh, I am sorry. Well, here's your bill. Wait a minute. Well, don't you mean wait a bell or something? What? What's the problem? Look, you see here, mister... Com Commodore. Commodore. Yes, Nobody. Yes. Right, right. You gave us a 20% sales discount, but then you added 10%. That's right. The 10% hotel tax surcharge. Don't blame me. It's the municipal law. We're not blaming you. But it would just be fairer if you add the 10% tax to our bill first and then take 20% discount off the whole thing. It would just be a better deal for us. Believe me, it's better for you my way. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, no it, it isn't. isn't. Is, 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 and is. Now you're just arguing for the sake of arguing. No, I'm not. Yes, yes you, you are. are. Oh, what is going on out here? <laughs> Nothing, my pet. Tiny disagreement about the bill with the Joneses. I gave them their 20% sailor's discount and then added the 10% hotel tax surcharge. And we say it would be fairer and cheaper if he added the 10% surcharge and then gave us 20% off the whole thing. Oh, well, it really doesn't matter. Of course it matters, Jane, dear. It doesn't. Yes, it, it does. does. No, it doesn't. Uh, what was the bill, Cyril? $100, my lamb, my pearl. <laughs> Very well. Uh, $100. We'll do it your way first, Cyril. Take 20% off. That's $20. Leaving us with 80. Add on the 10% surcharge. 10% of 80 is 8. That's a total of $88. Such a bargain. All right, so now let's do it our way. $100, very well. Now add on the 10% surcharge. That's 10 bucks, so $110. Right. And with a 20% discount? Well, let's see. 10% of 110 is 11, so 20% is 22. 110 minus 22 is? 88. They are exactly the same. Oh well, swab my deck. My apologies, Jane. You are, as you are, with appalling regularity, correct. I'll take that as a compliment, dear. And by the way, whenever you have two different percentages to apply to a bill, it doesn't matter which you do first. No, no it, it doesn't. doesn't. Great. Here's your $88. We gotta go. Ciao. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm checking out, too. You only just got here. 
Is there something wrong with the room? Oh, no, the room's fine, old chap, except for one teensy little problem. What? It's on fire. Oh, it's on fire, is it? It's, it's on fire! Oh, Mayday! Mayday! Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! Fire on the poop! Fire! Fire on the poop! issue licenses to di di digitally enhanced computer-generated TV personalities? No! I have to take simulated road trips when I want to go for a spin. It's not like cruising down the highway with the roof down, but hey, virtual reality is be better than no reality, right? <laughs> cruising down the highway is something you American humanoids do a lot. A lot? Do you know how many cars there are in the U.S. of a, sit down and buckle those seatbelts. About 150 million. Whoa! 150 million. Your total population is about 250 million, which means that there's one car for every 1.66666 Americans. That's one and two-thirds, by the way. <laughs> wow. What do one and two-thirds Americans look like, anyway? Like this? <laughs> hey! I wouldn't want that guy to be behind the wheel. <laughs> oh, pay attention to your driving, wise guy. If you subtract all the people who are too young to drive or don't want to drive, the ratio of cars to people is probably closer to one to one. Close to a car for each and every driving fool in this country. You are one car crazy bu bunch. <laughs> Here's another way to look at it. That 150 million cars is about, oh, 33% of all the cars in the world. But you know what? The U.S. population is only about 5% per per percent of the whole world, which means that the ratio of cars to people here is much higher than in, say, China. In China, they've got only about one car for every 5,000 people. That calls for some serious carpooling. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they don't have nearly as many traffic jams over there. Unless you count traffic jams with bikes. Oh, boy, they do have a lot of bikes in China. How many? Well, I'll tell you. A trillion gazillion! Just kidding. That's not a real number. The fact is... I don't know. It's true. Even I, with my head full of facts, don't know that statistic. I'd better go find out. Here we go! Ha-ha! The great thing about virtual reality is no smog! <laughs> Give a hoot! Don't pollute! Yippee! Whoa! The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Thursday, 9.43 a.m., and the survey showed New Yorkers had been spending most of their money on doctors and car wheels. Let's face it, New Yorkers were sick and tired. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Tuesday. I'm a mathematician. Nothing seemed to be going right in what we euphemistically called the case of the smart dummy. Ventriloquist dummies aren't supposed to talk. Ventriloquists are. In this mystery, just the opposite was true. We decided to scour earlier episodes to clean up our act. When George frankly introduced me to Charlie McShtick, Charlie said... Miss Tuesday, I know it sounds strange, but, well, we used to be Charlie, Edgar, and Lolly. A terrific act. Used to be? That's right, until Lolly turned up missing. Suitcases get switched at airports all the time, and we assumed that's what happened when the threesome returned to New York with one wrong bag, Lolly's. Instead of a dummy, in the bag was... I bet there's over a million bucks here. Want to go to lunch? There was exactly a million dollars, all of it stolen from banks that just happened to be in the cities where Charlie, Edgar, and Lolly had just performed. In fact, the evidence against them was so strong that... Let me out of here, you dirty screws! Uh, I'm innocent, innocent, I tell you! I'm going to give it to you like they give it to my brother. I'm too young to die. I want to see the sunrise again. Stop and smell the roses. Feel the wind through my knuckle. They were in jail for Easy. robbing banks. Give me an Give Charlie me an denied it, but George said... But they have witnesses in Ann Arbor, Minneapolis. 
Des Moines, Dayton, and Columbus who will swear you did. They're lying. Minneapolis. Did you say Minneapolis? Yes, why? Because we weren't in Minneapolis. We checked his story and they weren't. They had been booked there, but a blizzard kept them out of town. We got them released and things were looking better until District Attorney Wofford came into our office and said, Thought you'd like to know. About half of the money stolen from the five cities is traceable. You mean the banks had records of the serial numbers? Exactly. So we checked your million dollars. And? And none of the money matches. But if half of the stolen money was marked, and they stole 1,300,000... Then some of it would have to match. That's right. So we looked at the money a little more closely. It's queer. Queer? Counterfeit. Counterfeit. Ever been arrested for counterfeiting, dummy? We had one million dollars of counterfeit money, but the robberies amounted to 1.3 million. Where was the real missing money? That was a street person. Oh? A guy who knows what's happening illegal-wise. His name is Blinky Eisenglass, and he runs a shoe shine stand as a front. Come on. Can you tell if it's counterfeit? Well, you look at a lot of things, Miss Tuesday. You look to make sure the portrait is clear and distinct, and make sure the serial numbers are evenly spaced, that the bordering lines aren't blurred. And here, you make sure the treasury seal is clear. <laughs> this is fake. How does one get counterfeit loot? One pays money for it. You buy it? Yep. 20 points on the buck. <laughs> You think illegal money is free? Oh, 20 points? 20 points. A point is a percentage point. 20% of what? 20% of the whole. 20% of the 100%. So if I wanted to buy a counterfeit dollar bill, it would cost me? 20%. 20 cents. If I wanted to buy a counterfeit $100 bill... 20 bucks, if you pass it and get away with it. it. It's like real money. If you get caught, you do real time. In prison. So a million dollars worth of counterfeit money would cost... $200,000. George, our man could have spent $200,000 to buy $1 million of bogus money. And he would have had the rest of the robbery money left over. Walking around, Doe. Come on. Blinky, thanks for talking with no us. No problem. I love math net. I want to be a mathematician when I grow up. When you grow up? Yeah. I, I'm young at heart, Miss Tuesday. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? They stiffed me. <laughs> Are you positive? Thanks very much. That was the airlines, Pat. They've identified a name that is common to all these flights. The name? Floyd Snurd. Snurd nosebleed. But George, Snurd went to different cities than Charlie and Edgar did. Different cities, yes, but cities that were very close to Edgar's route. And the dates from the airline fit. Look, the first robbery was near Detroit. Toledo is near Detroit. The second was in Dayton. Cincinnati isn't far. The next is Des Moines. Cedar Rapids isn't far. Yes, but what about the next one? I see what you mean. Charlie and Edgar couldn't get to Minneapolis because of the weather. But the airline said that Snurr did fly from Cedar Rapids to Rochester. He must have gotten in before the weather turned bad. He could have rented a car and pulled the robbery. Right. Snurr had no way of knowing that Charlie's performance would be canceled. I'll check Rent-A-Car and see if Snurd did that. I'll see if I can get an address. Folks, meet Ebenezer Squeeze. Tell him what you do, Squeeze. <laughs> I I'm a landlord. Tell him why you're here, Mr. S. Well, I was collecting my rent envelopes, you know, doing some evictions, turning the heat off in some of my buildings. Get on you know, with it. it. Well, anyway, I was owed some back rent. And when I went to deposit the cash, 
The bank said it was hot money. He had five $100 bills from the armored car robbery in Des Moines. Where did you get them? From a tenant. A fellow by the name of Floyd Snurd. What's the address? 1313 13th place. Thanks for helping us catch a despicable villain. <laughs> it won't do you any good. I mean, he packed up this morning, lock, stock, and barrel, and left. I think he went to Costa Rica. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'll put an all-points bulletin on him, but... Yeah, let's close an APP doors after the ventriloquist has left. Hello, Charlie. Any change in Edgar? No, I'm afraid he's still out there. Fortunately, Snurd is, too. Maybe in Costa Rica. Yep, we got the right answer to the problem just a little late. Maybe the Costa Rican authorities will find him and send him back for trial. Well, my guess is, with over a million dollars, he'll change his appearance and lead the life of... Oh, really? No. O'Reilly. Actually, I dropped out to see if you're going to go to the Aspects. Aspects? Yeah, the award show. It starts in an hour. Uh, maybe some other time, Charlie. Thanks, anyway. Okay, well, I just want to catch the guy who's subbing for us. It's a ventriloquist with a magic act. The lady at Asfas says Merlin cuts one of the munchkins in half for a finale. Should be good for a laugh. See ya. Matt, and frankly. Oh, hi, Annie. Well, thanks for your help. It doesn't make much difference anymore anyway. Broadway Annie said no one's ever heard of Merlin and the munchkins. George. Pat? George, how did Asfast notify Charlie and Edgar that they'd been replaced? Charlie never mentioned how. He just said they got informed. How could they? Edgar's been comatose ever since he found Lolly missing. Who are you calling? Asfast. Asfast? Hello, Asfast. It's Pat Tuesday with MathNet. You're sponsoring the show tonight, which was going to feature Charlie, Edgar, and Lolly, right? Wonder if you mind telling me why you canceled them. I see. How did you notify Edgar? Could you fax those to us? Thank you. She said they received a letter, then they sent one. Anyway, she's going to fax it all over to us right away. We're not on the same page, Pat. Something doesn't add up. The Asfast promoter said she sent Edgar a letter. So? Edgar probably read it when he got back from his trip. Here it is. Dear Mr. Bergman, sorry to hear of your tragedy, but be notified that we have taken your advice and hired Merlin and the Munchkins. Thank you sincerely. What tragedy? Here's the one Asfas received. Dear Asfas, we will be unable to perform your upcoming show because Lolly is missing. Please be advised, as a substitute, I highly recommend an act called Merlin and the Munchkins, a delightful ventriloquist and magic act. Sorry for the inconvenience. Sincerely, Edgar Bergman. How could Edgar have written that letter? He, 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 he couldn't know that Lolly be missing. Exactly. And guess where the letter was mailed from? Rochester, Minnesota. Edgar wasn't even in Rochester, Minnesota. I know, but... Snurd was. Snurd set it up. He committed the robberies, and then he kept the real money to retire on. And framed Edgar, a man he's hated for years. And, and the thing of it is, he got away with it. Maybe not. Come on, Pard. Let's go to the award show as fast as we can. Lastly, let me say, I deserve, I deserve this award, award, and you and don't. You don't. I know we said we weren't coming, but we changed our minds. Good, good to see you here. Pull up a chair. How's Merlin? He's awful. Just awful. Makes one ashamed to be in this business we call show. Well, that's the final award of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet lovely little Lola. Well, my dear, care to sing us a song? Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. See what I mean? This guy is terrible. His mouth moves more than hers does, and he can't carry a tune in a sedan chair. Lola wants love. Resign yourself. Resign yourself. You're true. Well, if, uh, 
one lovely little Lola is this good, imagine how good two lovely little Lolas can be. Oh, no! Please, don't saw me in half! It won't hurt, my dearest, not for long. Please, won't someone save me? Swallows return to Cat Castrano. Oh, wait, boy, you bother me. Hello, Charles. Is that your nose, or are you eating a banana? Listen, you fugitive from the four alarm fire. For two cents, I... For two cents, you do anything. Get back on the wood pile where you belong. Wally! And now, ladies and gentlemen, I, the great Merlin, for my final trip, shall disappear. Lloyd Snurd, I presume. It is I, America's best kept secret, ventriloquism wise. Uh, you foiled me, sir, and I nearly ended Edgar Bergman's career and retired with my greatest triumph. The key word here is nearly, Snurd, you cad. And look, my old nemesis nosebleed, and you, you snurred. Ah, uh, you got me. But you gotta admit, would have been a great finish. Not as good as the finish we've got planned for you. It's probably the longest run you'll ever have. About 25 years. Snurd, a.k.a. Merlin and the Munchkins, was tried in Manhattan in and for the state of New York. He was found guilty of a 170.15, forgery in the first degree, a 155.40, grand larceny in the second degree, and a 110.00, sawing a dummy. Nosebleed was found guilty of being a dummy and hanging with a bad ventriloquist. They are both in state's prison, where Nosebleed is studying law, hoping to become a mouthpiece. Beginning next Monday at this time, Club Connect joins our afternoon lineup. So make a note to join the fun on Club Connect. Weekday afternoons beginning next Monday, April 19th at 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. Square One! This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by the financial support of viewers like you. Corporate funding of Square One TV is provided by the Intel Corporation Foundation. Intel's technology is the brain power for computers in your life. Intel, the computer inside. This is PBS. These are the facts, just the facts. 
Tuesday and Frankly have plans for the weekend. Mystery weekend. Oh, where everybody plays a different part and tries to solve a crime? Sounds swell, but when they arrive, ah! some things just don't add up. Only two guests disappeared. And a statue was found in each of their rooms. So where's the sixth statue? Don't miss a special hour of MathNet, the case of the mystery weekend. Sunday at noon here on 13.